oh, I feel like where I ended up this time is really bad. Like, really, really bad. Join me today as I show you how I built Skull Mountain, some more usable terrain for my Kill Team game board. So I found this skull online really cheap, thanks to it being Halloween and everything. So I just start out by cutting off some of the mold lines and then I'm going to sand it down so it takes paint a little bit better. To make this a bit more playable, I'm going to have an interior to it. And in order to facilitate that, I'm going to cut out the eye holes, the nose holes and the ear holes. That way you got somewhere to look out of when you're up there. Because I was using a Stanley knife to do this, the cuts are pretty rough. So I'm just going to fill up anywhere where I cut too far and there's like big gaps and gashes in it. I'm just going to cover that up with some wall filler or spackle. For the mountain part, I want to give it a really cool silhouette, like it has some horns or a crown growing out behind it, made of stone. So to do that, I'm just going to cut three pillars of stone that go up a bit higher than the skull size is. So that way you can sit a bit off the ground, and it can also have that little spikes up the top. And I'm just going to carve these spikes out of some XPS foam. And I'm going to use the handy rock I found just to press in some texture into the foam. And you can see in one area it'll be really smooth and have a bunch of like potholes in it because it's very porous. And then once you press that texture in, it gets a really nice rock look. Because I want mainly only the face part of the skull to be there, I'm going to cut off the back, probably like the back fourth the back quarter of it and going through with the knife it's pretty tough to get through this plastic because it gets really thick and it's uneven in some areas so using a dremel tool is much better once the back of the skull is cut out I get some sculptor mold, homemade sculptor mold, which is using plaster and some torn up tissue paper. And then I just fill in the floor that will be in the skull. That way we have a bit more of a flat area and it's a bit higher up so you can see through the eye holes. And while I'm going through here, I'm trying to make it as flat as I can. That way I'm not running into any problems down the line. And when I let it dry, I just rest it on this little cup. That way it doesn't topple over. And you can see here, it dries nice and flat. And that's a really good texture for the floor. Onto a scrap piece of MDF, I glue down my three little pillars that I've cut out. Or big pillars actually in this case. And then I just carve them down a little bit more. That way they have a bit of a height difference because they're all carved out of the same size piece of foam. And I realized when I put them there, they don't look good all being the same height. So I just carved them down and gave them a bit more shape and then retextured them with the stone. To get the skull in a more rounded shape at the back, I'm just going to press it up against the pieces of foam and sketch out a rough shape. I'm also going to cut out some of the metal pieces that were holding the jaw to the skull. And here you can see I'm just roughly carving out or drawing out and then I'll carve out some holes in the side as well. That way you can get in and out really easily from the sides. Now I do decide to swap to the Dremel tool, and this makes quick work of this plastic. Now 
because I cut around the top half of the skull and not the bottom part, that means there's still a little bit of lip. You can kind of see it there where the plaster is sitting. So I mark out that lip on the foam and I'm just going to carve a little groove in. That way I can fit the skull piece directly inside the stones. And that's going to give it a much stronger joint, especially since it's only being held up by these three pieces of foam and some plaster. Before I do finally fix it in though, I'm just going to draw out a little line to cut out the top of the skull. And this, it does make it look more like a toy and less like a display piece, but it is a quintessential for getting access into the skull and actually having it have a bit of a playable area. And you can see there I've drawn two circles on either side, pretty roughly, and then I'm going to cut those out and that'll be the little entry and exit way. And then I just fill the bottom with a bunch of hot glue and shove it in. And then I make sure to add a bit more hot glue along the sides as well to make sure it's kept in at least for now. And then I'll add some plaster in there to really secure it. And again, this is the same sculpt to mold mix. And I'm adding it like everywhere inside of the skull. So that way I'm getting a bit more texture on the inside to make it look different to the stones that are around it. I'm also filling in any gaps in between the three pieces of foam. Once that is done, I'm just going to trim down the top piece of the skull, make sure it fits really well, and then I'm going to sand down the connecting joint areas. And also on the skull, sand out any rough cuts. Then I'm just going to grab a whole bunch of off-cut pieces of foam. You can see them all lining up there. And I'm going to start building a real rough stairway. I want this to look like something kind of semi-magical, kind of like built up just by a bunch of scrap pieces to get up into the skull. I really want it to be able to be anything, like some sort of cult area or just a spooky skull place. I, I don't know. It's a mountain with a skull in it. Pretty spooky. When it's all secured in with plenty of hot glue, I just take it all off the base. Because I only used a little bit of glue on the base, it comes off really easy. I then just beat it up with a rock to texture it up. Because I also want to have some texture on the skull, make it not just look real smooth, I'm going to cover it in PVA glue and then really lightly sprinkle on some bicarb soda. This gives a really nice stony sort of rough texture you can see at one point I also carved down the MDF base a little bit and I just did that using a Stanley knife I'm then gonna cover the boring bland wooden base in even more homemade sculptor mold tissue paper plaster of Paris easy I also fill any holes with some plaster of Paris, as well as going over it with some spackle as well. And this is really going to hide the seam marks between the foams and make them look like they're coming out of one piece. Once this is all dried up, you can hit it with some aluminium foil as well 
just to restore some of that rough, rocky texture. I then mix up a base coat of PVA glue, black paint, and some white gesso here, so I get a bit of a grey paint. And this works well as my base colour as well. Once the dark grey base coat is done, I give it a light spray of a light grey spray paint and then I start covering it in some watered down colors. So I cover the bottom in a watered down brown mixture and then I cover all of the stone in a watered down purple. And because I did that spray from the top, inside of the skull, it's all really dark and that looks really nice. It's now pretty late and all the light is leaving me, but I quickly give it all a dry brush of a light gray to kind of tone down that dark purple wash. And this looks like a really cool, evil sort of Necron stone. I really focus on highlighting the face because that's where all the cool shapes are and that's where your eye is going to be drawn. Once the sun is out, I then start flocking it up. I grab some of the chamomile tea and some green tea and cover the ground in that. And then I mix up some moss of a dark green and PVA glue and I stipple that around in the darker areas especially underneath and inside of the skull. I think that looks really cool. And once that is all dry, Skull Mountain is complete. You can lift it up from this little hole that I left in the back and the inside looks really cool. Really heavy with that purple and green look. I also added this little rope so you can slide out the side of the hole, but I didn't catch that on camera. It's just a popsicle stick with some rope in it. <laughs> and I'm really happy with how this turned out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week with something different.